Greetings! Today we're reviewing Black Powder uh, from Warlord Games, published in 2010, I believe. Uh, and it's for gaming Black Powder period, as the title says. Uh, pretty much all the way up to 1900. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about Keith, but actually of all the roles we've reviewed so far, this is the one I'm most looking forward to, because I have some, some strong opinions about Black Powder. <laughs> I don't think I have super strong opinions, which is, I think, actually part of my problem. Uh, okay, well, uh, let's get into it. As with all of our rule reviews, we are going to look at five different categories, and we're going to rate them one to ten. All right, so first... Uh, what is the category that we're going to cover today will be the presentation. Now, it's it's a Warlord Products game, or Warlord Games product, I should say. And because it's Warlord, it's beautiful. Uh, the layout is really impressive. There's It's full of color pictures. I mean, you could spend hours just flipping through looking at all the different um, pictures and e they cover each period. So These there's... pictures will make you feel bad about yourself. Oh yeah, you're gonna wanna... <laughs> they're gorgeous. You're gonna want to set your stuff on fire. <laughs> um, so for me presentation is is great. It's it's very beautiful. You you want this on your shelf because even the spine is pretty. So when you have it on the shelf it looks good. So what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm also going 8 out of 10. It, just visually, like physically, the book's a 10 out of 10. But I'm, I'm knocking off two points because uh, it's a little bit unwieldy at 180 plus pages. I felt like they could have really tightened it down. Only 90 of that, roughly, is rules. Could have been a third of that if they wanted to. So there's a lot of fluff in this book. Yeah, it's, it's full uh, of fluff. Which, personally, I prefer a slimmer book. So I'll go 8 out of 10. But it's, I agree with Keith. This is a beautiful product. No, I didn't, I didn't give my score, so um, I should, guess I should do that. Uh, I scored it a 9. Uh, I, don't give, I don't think I would give anything a 10. Uh, I think reaching a 10 for, for <laughs> presentation is a bar that I've never seen Keith reached will yet. never give a 10. <laughs> yeah. All right, our second category is playability. Uh, the rules don't really specify a scale. So really, that means that you could telescope this down to a, a relatively small scale, or you could play it as a big battle. They just talk about units. So it's up to you whether a unit is a company or whether a unit is an entire regiment. Uh, so I do think that that's kind of nice. That means that you can use black powder for a, a variety of different game scales. They talk about 28 millimeter miniatures. All the beautiful photos in the book are 28 millimeter miniatures, but it's said that you can use whatever scale miniatures you want. So the basing, very flexible. The scale of the game, very flexible. Scale of the miniatures, very flexible. Uh, if I'm going to offer a criticism here, it's that the measurements offered in the game are frankly ridiculous. Uh, the shooting ranges are absurd. The amount of table space that you need is, is crazy. So, for example, in the back of the book, there's a scenario for uh, Freeman's Farm. And in their Freeman's Farm scenario, they're talking about 28 millimeter miniatures with a 12 foot by 8 foot table. And the order of battle for that relatively small battle is over 600 miniatures. Oof. Now, yeah, <laughs> like. Here in this club, we're very fortunate because we do have that kind of table space and we do have that number of miniatures, but honestly, I don't, I don't think most gamers have a space where they've got 12 by 8 feet and hundreds of 28 millimeter miniatures. In fact, I think we would have a hard time putting a 12 by 8 table up there. Yeah, that, that maxes us out here, really, yeah. at the club. So, uh, I, I, it, playability in terms of barrier to entry, you're going to have to rescale the measurements, you're going to have to rescale the figure requirements and the table space. Because Black Powder is open architecture, that's all very doable. It's just the onus is on you as the player mm -hmm. to come up with really all new measurements for that. I didn't. I don't use this system myself as far as designing scenarios. So that open architecture, I think, is a problem. If if you don't feel like doing all that work, it's hard to just dive in. Uh, last thing I'll say about playability is that the rules frankly, are pretty easy. Um, it's over 90 pages of rules in this book, but that could have easily been 20 or less. Not going to take you a long time to learn how to play this game or to teach somebody how to play it. So, a little bit of a mixed bag here. I'm going 7 out of 10 on playability. Keith, what are uh, your thoughts? Pretty, almost exactly the same. I gave it a 7. I, I think originally I might have said an 8 and then I dumped, bumped it back. I mean, you guys taught me, a, a complete idiot with learning rules, uh, to play this within the first time, like the first time I played it, I, I pretty much learned it. If, it was, Keith, if Keith can learn it, anyone <laughs> can learn right. it. Because <laughs> right, I do not pay attention. <laughs> 
All right, so now we're gonna talk about the mechanics involved in black powder. Uh, at the beginning of the game, it's gonna be on you to organize your army into different unit sizes. Uh, black powder specifies tiny, small, regular, and large units. Again, what that unit represents is kind of up to the scenario. Um, groups of units are then led by an officer and then all of those different groups together form your army. So it's a, it's a pretty generic and uh, easy setup system. Yeah. If you're playing an opponent who, and you're just bringing miniatures to the table, you have to both be on the same page with that. Yeah, so there's no point, there are no points here like right. to build an army. And I think in our, in our experience, we've had a GM design the scenario and the armies and made both sides right. at the same time. So I, I, don't know what, I don't know what it would be like if you had to, if I brought my miniatures and you brought yours and we were supposed to kind of put a game together. This would be tough for a pickup game, I okay. think. Yeah, okay. definitely. All right. The turn system is I go, you go. It's basically War Master. Yeah, uh, which which is a fine system, and I played that back in the '90s um, with uh, I think I had Dark Elves, uh, so I played it a couple times, and, and I remember picking this up, and oh yeah, it's kind of like kind of like War Master. Um, you roll roll, well, you have to declare your intention, so you have to give an, a unit order, so you have to say to your opponent, "This is what I'm going to do," and then you roll dice against your command score. If you succeed, the unit does that. If you don't, then you don't. There's a blunder, uh, yeah. which things can go. Badly for that unit. But. The blunder table is kind of cool, actually. Yeah. yeah, that that adds a little bit of fun to it. Yeah, so, it, so it, it is not bad. It is fun. Yeah. yeah, and if you're wondering why it's a ripoff of War Master, it's because it's the same author, Rick Priestley, of famed GW legend. So. Well, and he went from he went from Warlord or not Warlord Games. He went from GW to Warlord Games. It founded Warlord Games, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah, I think he's one of the co-founders. Yeah. So I mean, it's a solid system as far as mechanics go. Everything works. Everything does what it says on, on, on the tin. Yeah, and I think a lot of those sort of GW influences really leaked over into the rest of the mechanics as well. So shooting and combat both to me feel like sort of Warhammer, mm -hmm. uh, Warhammer mechanics. You're going to roll a, a fistful of D6s, you're going to look for a four or better. Mm -hmm. There are some modifiers in both shooting and mechanics based on the size of the unit. The cover. There aren't a lot of modifiers, which makes it easy to remember. There's an armor. I mean, oops, sorry. <laughs> morale save. It is uh, basically an armor save. Yeah, That's yeah. what so it is. If you fail it, then you know, you know bad things happen. Yeah, uh, but it works. I mean, with all that said, there are also rules in here for uh, doing formation changes, where you can move from column to line. You can shake out into skirmish formation. Uh, so. Buried in this 90 pages of rules, there are lots of options for other things you can do. How to enter buildings, how to fight from buildings, uh, a lot of other details that I don't think we really need to cover here in right. the mechanics review. Oh, casualties, mention casualty, remo casualty removal and how do you treat casualties. Yeah, there isn't any casualty removal. Right. <laughs> then that's, uh, I kind of like taking models off the table. Oh, huh? okay, uh, yeah. When I play games, but. Uh, I find I find a, having a stamina score or you know some kind of score where you're crossing that off and reducing that on paper, I I can't stand that. Well, you can put markers on the table, right? Too. That, that, and that's how I think we traditionally do. Yeah, there it. there aren't this. units don't have a lot of stamina points in this game. They might have two, three, four, maybe five points. So that's markers that you put on your units. Right. And once you've reached your stamina level, the unit is, goes to a shaken status. Mm. which uh, is just a, a bad state of morale. And bad things happen when your unit is shaken. So, uh, yeah, you're right. There, there aren't figure removal in this game. It's just a big block of models, and you're putting markers down. Yeah. Last thing I want to mention at the end of the mechanics section is that um, units do also get rated, if you want, with characteristics. Uh, I don't remember how many of them are in the rules. There might be as many as 20, but these would be things like sharpshooter or steady and uh, these are unit characteristics that do add a little bit of flavor to the game and essentially they offer special abilities uh, again it's up to you as the player to design all of the units so you've got to you know read through that list ahead of time and pick if you want any of your units to have those uh, special characteristics and again it's one of those things if you're playing if you're designing the scenario on both sides that's easy if you're arriving with miniatures and playing somebody that you don't know Hard to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give my units all the best things and right. then you argue with each other. So uh, now that we've gotten to the end of this, what are your thoughts on the mechanics? What's your score? Uh, I was gonna say a four, I think five. I think average. Okay. Nothing wrong with it, mechanics are simple, it works. But I don't think there's any particular, uh, there's nothing particularly uh, exciting about any of it either. Uh, I think we described it in the club as uh, black powder for when you want to roll dice and move miniatures. <laughs> yeah. That about sums and, up. And that sounds that. terrible, but... But it's kind of true. But it is true. 
Yeah, so you're going, you're going five yeah. out of ten. I'm going to go five out of ten. Yeah, not average. bad, but yeah, average, yeah. that's fine. I, I actually thought about going five out of ten as well uh, because, like you said, the rules do work. Yeah. But because this is subjective, and I'm being honest, I'm going to go three out of ten. It's not because the rules are broken. It's because personally, I just don't enjoy the mechanics all that mm. much. Okay, so the next category is historical flavor, and I feel that we both kind of have a similar take on this. So there's not that we're arguing about anything else, but um, historical flavor, I scored a one. <laughs> I believe one is as low as it's you can go, Keith. As low as you can go. Uh, <laughs> yes, you have historical flavor of you're playing a black powder period all the way up to 1900, and you can play any of those conflicts, and the, the rules allow you to have a lot of the characteristics of that combat. You can form squares, you can do different formations, but there's also nothing particularly relevant about that to any one particular conflict. How can you use the same set of rules to game uh, you know, the American War of Independence and also the Anglo-Zulu War? <laughs> right. Those yes. are two completely separate conflicts with <laughs> different technologies, different tactical challenges for the commanders, right. and this rule set tries to do all of it in one rule set. And it does it in a very... Gen that's the thing, it works. Well, I make my historical flavor scale of one, or score of one is actually pretty bad. Maybe it's it, the worst you can go. It is true. I think maybe I would give it a two because <laughs> you can do any of these periods, you just don't do any of them with any flavor. No. And I, I guess for some people that's fine because then, then they can have, okay, we've got black powder, that's what we play for this entire period. And anytime in the, anybody's playing a game in any of this period in the club, we can run that system. Yeah. And everybody knows it. That's the advantage. So that's. An advantage. That's not, I guess. That's not our advantage. No. No. So, You're going two? Two out of ten? I'll, I'll go two out of ten. I'm, I'm going two out of ten as well. I feel like the only sop that they throw you toward historical flavor are those unit characteristics right. that we mentioned a minute ago. Other than those, like, 20 characteristics, mm -hmm. there's nothing here. This is a completely bland and flavorless experience. Now, they sell supplements. I know right. that they do sell individual supplements. So we mentioned the American War of Independence. Well, they've got an American War of Independence supplement. But frankly, if I pay $48 for this beautiful rule book, mm -hmm. I don't really feel like paying another $32 in order to get each one of the individual supplements. That's yeah. a very GW move, uh, if you ask me. Okay, our final category uh, to discuss is support, and uh, frankly, this one will be short and sweet. I think it's it's excellent. Yeah. Um, this game is supported by Warlord Games, a very professional company. They've got a beautiful website. There's a separate page dedicated to Black Powder, and probably the best thing that you could say about Black Powder is that it is very widely played. Yeah. There are a lot of gamers all across the world that are doing this, which means that there's tons of other websites out there with scenarios, if you don't want to design your own scenario, after action reports. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a big community of people playing this game. Yeah, if you're going to play this, you're not going to have any problem um, finding an opponent. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, every historical convention on the East Coast in the U.S., HMGS, you see... You see lots of black powder games. Absolutely. Uh, which means when you show up, you already know what you're doing. Yeah, so, so there's an advantage to that. Um, yeah. So yeah, for, for support, uh, I'm going to go 8 out of 10. I think it's it's excellent. Mm -hmm. Only reason I'm not going higher on support is Warlord themselves don't do a whole lot. If you go to their website, the page dedicated to black powder is just a sales page. Right. Where they're trying to sell you rules. Yeah. Uh, so they don't internally have a ton of support, but you will find other gamers with support. So eight out of yeah, ten. I gave eight out of ten too. Same reasons. Um, it's it's a big Warlord Games is is a big company that can support their product. Their products are nice. Yep. So eight out of ten. All right, so now we finally made it to the conclusion where we'll uh, wrap things up and each give our, our final weighted score. Uh, one reminder before Keith and I give those scores is that uh, we do not weight all of the categories equally. Mm. So uh, presentation and support are 10% of the final score. Playability and mechanics are each 30%, and historical flavor is 20%. Uh, if you want to know more about the way that we score things here at Little Wars TV, you can go to our website and find out. So Keith, where'd you come in? 54 it works, it plays, but there's nothing particularly interesting about it. So, average. Would uh, would you recommend that people pay $48 for this rule set? I wouldn't because I didn't have to, because the club <laughs> bought it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if I was going to be playing this period, I would probably look for something else. Yeah, uh, my final weighted score on this was a 50 out of 100, which is um, a pretty low score. Uh, and I 
can't honestly say that I do recommend black powder. Uh, that's a very subjective opinion. Mm. As I said before, if you're looking for a good tabletop game generally, then black powder is great and it's worth every penny of the 48 bucks because it's one of the most beautiful rule books that I've seen in wargaming. But if you're looking for a historical wargame experience for a specific era, if I'm going to play Civil War, if I'm going to play AWI, if I'm going to play Anglo Zulu, I'm going to buy a rule set that's less than $48 that covers specifically one of those periods of history. Uh, agreed. Black powder for when you want to roll dice and move miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get so much <laughs> mail for this. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Intrusion of women folk. Well, that was pretty harsh. I don't know what Keith and Greg's problem is. Truth be told, here in the club, we've got a number of members who really, really enjoy black powder, including myself. And if you'd like to see what more thoughtful war gamers think about this great rule system, head on over to LittleWarsTV.com, our reviews page, where you can see what ratings the rest of us gave it.